Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Chumbal Fertilizers and Chemicals Q3 and 9 months FI23 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ishavara from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the Jumble Fertilizers and Chemicals Q3 and 9 months FY23 earnings call. We have with us today Mr. Gaurav Mathur, Managing Director, Mr. Rajveer Singh, Vice President, Legal and Company Secretary, Mr. Anand Agarwal, CFO, Mr. Ashish Srivastava, Vice President, Sales and Marketing, and Mr. Anand Jain, Assistant Vice President, Finance. Before we get started, I would like to point out that some statements made or discussed in the conference call today may be forward-looking in nature and must be viewed in conjunctions with the risks the company faces. Chumble Fertilizers and Chemicals does not undertake to update them. The statement in this regard is available for reference in the presentation. We will begin the call with opening remarks from Mr. Mathur. I would now like to invite Mr. Mathur to share his views. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Rishabh. Uh, good day and a uh, warm welcome to all of you participating in this call. Uh, we have already shared the presentation on financial performance of the company, which I hope you would have gone through. Overall, we are happy with the performance of our urea plants, where we have achieved better efficiency in operations. The crop protection chemicals and specialty nutrients business continues to do well and we have a lot of confidence to continue the journey of growth as we go ahead. We have substantially increased the sales volumes of DAP and NPK fertilizers with encouraging performance in the new geographies. However, the high prices of DAP and NPK fertilizers had impacted the profitability. As we look ahead, there is a declining trend in commodity prices, including prices of DAP, NPK, and MOP fertilizers, and also natural gas. This augurs well for the company, as it will not only give stability to our PNK fertilizer segment, but will also help in substantial reduction of working capital requirement of the company. Moreover, the timely release of subsidy by the government of India is another positive factor, and we hope that this trend will continue as we have seen for the past uh, few years. We are also happy with the execution of our seed to harvest program, which continues to provide desired momentum to our growth plans, especially in crop protection chemicals and specialty nutrients and we are where we are directly engaged with a large number of farmers and we are continuously increasing this program as we progress. I would also like to share that corporate social responsibility, which has always been a high priority for the company. Uh, we have made focused interventions in different areas to make a perceptible positive change in the lives of the community at large and especially the community around our site in Garepan. <clears throat> the highlights of our efforts on this front are also provided in the presentation. Our intervention in the area of education has received accolades over the years from the government and non-government organizations. Further, health, safety, and environment is another non-financial indicator which remained a focus area for the company. We continue to benchmark ourselves with best industry standards and strive to achieve better performance on a continuous basis. With that, I would be happy to take your suggestions along with my team. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. 
Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue is submitted. <laughs> Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. The first question is from the line of Tarangar from Old Bridge Capital. Please go ahead. Um, hello, good afternoon, sir. Uh, three questions uh, from my side. On the CPC business, um, if I look at your nine-month FI23 performance, um, it's noteworthy. Just wanted to check, are we a bit of positive in this business or not? Absolutely. We have a very, okay. a very reasonable, lead, good EBIT down this business. Okay. As a company, we are very clear that we will, as we grow, we will have profitable growth. And we would not like to just grow the top line, but we would like to have profitable growth. Got it. Got it. The second is uh, uh, the 237 crore write-off that was taken uh, as a prudent measure in Q2. Any update on that? No update. <laughs> no, there is no uh, update on that as yet. Uh, we, are, we continue to work with uh, the industry association, oh. FAI, with the government, uh, but as of now, there is no specific update. Got it. And uh, the third question is, what's happening in IMSID? I mean, the contribution has been uh, considerably low for nine months. I understand that asset prices have come off significantly. Uh, so just an update yeah. on IMSID, please. I'll ask Anand yeah. to Hi. respond to that, our CFO. Hi, Tarang. Hi. So uh, there were two things which happened in the current quarter. One was that the um, uh, the prices of the uh, uh, phosphate reduced substantially uh, in, in Q3 and second was that our uh, sale quantity has been very high in particularly Q3. And third point was that the rock prices have not fallen commensurate with the um, um, you know, finished good prices. So these were the three reasons and one more uh, point is there that uh, they adjust the rock prices uh, post the quarter. Okay, so uh, some uh, adjustment for the previous quarters were also taken into account in this quarter. So when you say they adjust the rock prices post the quarter, uh, you mean that, I mean, if you could uh, explain a little bit more? Uh, not really. I think uh, we should see, uh, you know, going forward, the differences will reduce, uh, no, say, in the no, next few no. quarters. No. So, for instance, if rock phosphate prices have gone down during the quarter, right, would we see the impact of that at the end of the uh, current quarter? And similarly, if rock phosphate prices were to go up, uh, we would see the impact of that at the end of the quarter. So, in a downward trend, we lose, but in an upward trend, we benefit. Is that how it works? Yeah, that is true, but we have to see how the market dynamic works on the raw material prices and the finished good prices going forward. Yeah. Got it. And last question, what's the uh, working capital cost of debt right now for Chambal? So, uh, for the working capital, it will be at somewhere around 7.25% to 7.5%. Okay. Thank you. That's it from me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you sir. Ladies and gentlemen, you have press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Akshat Mehta from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Go ahead, sir. You audible. Yeah, we can hear you, Akshat. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, so I just wanted to uh, couple of questions. Uh, you know, one is about the nano fertilizers, which are you know expected to be the game changer for the industry. I just want to understand, you know, what according to you, what is what kind of an opportunity size or demand that you see going forward. I know how will that scale up over the next few years. Uh, if you can give any color on that. Yeah, thanks, Akshat. Yeah, I suppose there's been a lot of news on nano. So uh, we are doing trials with uh, nano fertilizers ourselves, as well as we are um, getting inputs from what's happening in the market. What I would say is that being the first sort of year, it's very early days, and uh, 
so I think we will need to see the whole cycle across a few cropping seasons to come to a full conclusion as to the potential uh, of, of uh, nano and uh, the impact it would have on the conventional fertilizer. So it, it is still quite early days actually, so it would not be fair for me to comment uh, on this, you know. Okay, so I think we are, just, we are still testing out that theory that, you know, one bottle of this nano fertilizer may replace that one bag of bulk fertilizer that we are currently, you know, selling. That theory is still being tested out. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, so those are the trials that are ongoing in the market. And I'm sure that the companies uh, who uh, who have brought forth this, uh, the nano, would uh, be in a better place. But like I said, we are doing trials, but we want to make sure that we gather uh, reasonable data. So we are doing trials over a few cropping seasons to make sure that we understand uh, what is being promised. Secondly, on your uh, traded uh, fertilizer, I mean, uh, how do you determine what kind of mar how do you determine the margin on this fertilizer? Is there a fixed margin? A basis the purchase cost that we do, or is it purely based on what the you know, domestic market price is in the in the country, and whatever is left out from a purchase price will be the margin. How do you determine that? Access, your voice is a bit muffled. You're talking about margin of what? Sir, I was talking about margins on traded uh, fertilizers. So uh, I just wanted to understand how does the how do you determine the margin? Is there a fixed margin which is charged on the purchase cost of those fertilizers, or you know the the margin is purely determined based on the purchase cost and the domestic price of the fertilizers that you sell at? <laughs> no, there is no fixed margin. It is determined by the purchase price, the market realization, the subsidy, and other costs incurred. Uh, in the process, whether it be handling cost, interest costs, and so on. So it's not a fixed margin; it, it is uh, a variable. Is there an is there a you know kind of a normalized situation number or a sustainable number, you know that that you generally achieve you know five percent, ten percent margin? I don't know. Uh, is there some kind of a number that you can share? No, we don't share specific uh, margin data as such, but the government has a cap. That's all I can tell you. They have a cap of a 12% uh, return on cost of goods sold, uh, which they have a cap. Uh, it is unusual for companies to normally reach that cap. Uh, and of course, the margin will depend on year on year. Right now, we are seeing two sort of second year of turbulence. Hopefully, in the next few years, things will stabilize. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Avidit Shah from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good afternoon and thanks for taking the question. Um, uh, just want to understand a bit more on the finance costs uh, line that we have. We've seen um, you know, costs go up uh, versus 2Q, but uh, both working capital and subsidy levels are coming down. So uh, what's the reason behind this uh, sequential increase in finance costs? Yeah, so uh, what has happened that the uh, subsidy, uh, you know, payment started post-October. So, and still for the quarter, it was the highest compared to the earlier quarters. So the finance cost was higher on that count. And second, due to increase in the interest rates also, there was some kind of hit. And we, we see that now in the last three months, we have received substantial subsidy. So that should start coming down. Okay, uh, understood. And, um, uh, you know, we've seen, we've seen a very healthy improvement in EBITDA levels, uh, YOY. Whereas, you know, urea uh, volumes are in fact, uh, you know, 2% down uh, versus last year. So is this uh, growth in, uh, while you don't disclose margins, I understand, but is this growth driven by the DAP uh, or the trading business or is it driven by better efficiencies in, uh, in the urea business? Well, it is largely driven by better efficiencies in the urea business. Uh, we have 
we had implemented uh, energy efficiency projects in our plants and that are that have uh, <clears throat> shown the results this year um, and and that's something that we will uh, you know keep doing going forward to keep on improving the energy efficiency of our plants which is good financially as well as good from a uh, ESG perspective also okay uh, so uh, is there any capex that you all have in mind uh, for this, this en these, these energy efficient uh, uh, efficiency and improvement uh, initiatives going forward yeah we we keep investing on an ongoing basis uh, with it so normally you know we are constantly on the lookout and we keep exploring energy efficiency projects so we keep uh, investing uh, capital in the range of 200 to 400 crores almost every year uh, on energy efficiency as well as other capital projects to replace old assets um, health safety and environment related and so on okay <laughs> and any any further discussions or have discussions move forward in terms of other capex initiatives other than the amount uh, technical ammonium nitrate project um, not as yet once we have something we'll definitely share it with all of you okay cool and just one last question from me is on the tax expense um, what's uh, i mean uh, i think uh, what's the timeline in which uh, you know do you expect to move uh, to the new tax regime where tax rates could come down uh, how much uh, you know old losses or, or mat credit do you have outstanding before which uh, they move we hope to uh, reach in a couple of years so like by by fi 26 do we assume uh, you would have fully moved to the new tax regime yeah somewhere around i think next to next year or year after that okay fine uh, thank you so much for answering this thank you thank you yeah. thank you ladies yeah. and gentlemen you may press star and one to ask a question the next question is from the line of harmshi desai from philip capital please go ahead Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, sir, uh, in the second quarter, we had this uh, one-time loss that we, uh, you know, on the uh, realization of DAP. So, and there was this mention that uh, we could get this overturned. So, is there is that something that has taken place, or can we, you know, stop expecting that to happen? You're asking, Harmesh. Yep. As I mentioned earlier, we are uh, working with the Fertilizer Association of India. And the matter continues to be in discussion with uh, the Department of Fertilizers. As of now, we don't have any specific update on that, but we do continue to pursue it, not uh, us and collectively through FAI. Okay. Uh, and sir, uh, on this uh, massive performance in the in the entire nine months that we have seen, you know, it has been impacted because of a lot of reasons. You know, in Q1 there was this. Uh, um, so in Q1, Q2, Q3. So what what are what can we expect from the performance? You know, going in FY24. I understand there was a there were issues with RM pricing and all that. But what can we expect from that uh, MSCET from FY24? Uh, you know, not considering the Q, Q4 and FY24. Yeah. Look, I'll, let me answer this in two parts. One is that it's it's given the volatile situation which still sort of persists, right? It's, uh, you know, the whole conflict situation is still there, etc. It's difficult to predict anything right now on, on, on this area, one. Second is that, uh, you know, overall, if you look at massive uh, performance, we have to bear in mind that last year was a bit of an exceptional year because of exceptional circumstances, right, the previous year. So we, uh, you know, we need to sort of see what is a normal uh, situation. Um, so we may be closer to normal now than in last year. Okay, understood. Sir. And sir, uh, one thing, so in the non-urea segment, you know, uh, we know that in the crop protection segment, we do not have any assets. But uh, sir, what is our plan from this segment in FY24? Do we plan to, you know, have any kind of capex and introduction of new uh, technicals in this particular segment? 
Okay. Okay. You're talking of a, of a manufacturing facility and crop exactly. protection, etc. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. you know, uh, we continue to evaluate that, right? And obviously, uh, you know, if you look at PPC assets, there is technical manufacture, there is formulation manufacture, and so on. We continue to evaluate it, and um, as of now, we don't have any concrete plans to acquire or build any assets right now. We we have a business model which seems to be working fine and is giving us a strong top line as a growth profitably. Um, so no specific plans right now. Uh, but sir, do we have any plans in terms of you know uh, uh, targeting some amount of capex for registration of off patent molecules? But you know for that we need a manufacturing facility. Okay. We we can't uh, register off patent molecules without having a manufacturing facility, Understood. right? So uh, that is there. But uh, we keep exploring various options in this area as we are now growing in size, and you know, there are opportunities in various forms. Okay, and sir, uh, my last question: uh, We have a urea business. We have a non-urea business. So what can be the margin profile you know in the 9 month that we have seen the margin profile bifurcation between urea and non urea just as an no, idea we don't really uh, normally share that and okay also you know these are very 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 unusual years so these are not also representative of a stable situation understood understood sir yeah So uh, that's it. Thank you from uh, thank you and uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. I request to all the participants please restrict to two questions per participant. If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow up question. The next question is from the line of Prashant Biani from Milara Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, what would be the breakup of uh, urea production from G1 and G2, G3 for quarter three? One second. At uh, okay. so, quarter three production from G1 was 5.35. G1 plus G2 was 5.35 lakh metric tons, and from G3 was 3.46 lakh metric tons. Uh, so, would you would we be taking any maintenance shutdown this quarter? Yeah, in quarter four this year, we have completed two years operation of Gadepan three, and we'll be taking a shutdown uh, in March. Hello. So the line for the participant dropped. We move on to the next participant. The next question is from the line of the roof mutual from HDFC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir. Thank you so much. So, a question on the non-urea business. Now, if I understand correctly, the government did not cut cut the subsidy amount significantly, and the RM prices, the input prices, are falling, and your volumes have also increased. So, based on my rough calculation, it seems uh, we should have benefited uh, decently for the uh, for the non-urea business this quarter. But it seems that's not fully reflected. So, is it because the we had the higher cost inventory, or probably my understanding is wrong? If you can probably help. Yeah. See, normally, if you see this quarter, this quarter is a key consumption quarter for Rabi, and a reasonable amount of quantity arrives um, say by the end of September, early October, right? Which has been um, contracted earlier. So what you said is right. Uh, when you look at the weighted average cost of goods. Um, you know it does result in some positive movement but not an exceptional gain okay so it is because you had already uh, contracted the sale price or the input prices in the earlier quarter at higher prices probably because of the uh, because of the situation and hence the full benefit is not got not getting reflected is that fair to yeah understand? you know there's a lead time of 30 to 45 days okay so Therefore, if you have to supply material in the peak rabi season in October and November, you have to do the contracting in September, right? So 
and and August. So the prices were still a little bit on the high side, and then they started to fall. And these are also you know linked to what's happening in the global um, situation in terms of Brazil and China and the U.S. etc. The second, two more questions. Uh, second is uh, now that uh, the global market is somewhat stabilizing and the prices have also started falling. I just wanted to understand: uh, Do you think the uh, traded volumes will start increasing given the availability is improving? And also wanted to get some sense on the uh, domestic uh, inventory or the supply situation. Uh, for the last two years, we were seeing the market was extremely tight. So, do you think some relaxation can happen in the next two years from a market perspective? And how does that dynamics play out? Sorry, what was the first part of your question? So uh, broadly, uh, so the uh, import prices have started to decline, and uh, there's some stability in the pricing, some stability, if I can call that. Uh, so, but do you think uh, the traded volumes for us can increase now because our trading, uh, there is more visibility to our trading now? Look, um, you know, if I go back a uh, year. Uh, we had started to see the same sort of trend one year ago also, and then things again changed. So while we have seen a positive trend of decline of uh, international prices, um, let us wait and see what happens over the next few months. Uh, that's one. Second is that in terms of the overall volume for the country, the change would not be very significant because with along with the Department of Fertilizers and all the companies put together, we ensured that adequate quantity of fertilizer was available. As regards Chambal, depending on what the international procurement price is, what the announcement of subsidy from the government is, uh, we will then plan our volumes accordingly. Sure, sir. Uh, and so the last uh, question is on the, you mentioned that there is a cap of about 12% on cost of goods sold for the non-urea fertilizers, if I'm not wrong. So that cap for you, the cap then reflects the cost of purchase of the, basically the imported cost of these NPKs or DAP. Is that fair? Yeah, the 12% is based on the import price. There is a certain formula that the government uses. So they base it 12%, uh, but it is essentially linked currently to the uh, CFR price uh, plus import duty. Okay, so CFR plus and, import duty and margin of 12% is maximum that you allow. That's right. That's the ceiling. That is the ceiling. Got it. Uh, perfect, sir. Thanks. Thanks so much, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next follow-up question is from the line of Prashant Biani from Milara Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, sorry, my line got disconnected. Uh, sir, this uh, G3 maintenance shutdown will be there for a month? Yeah, it is close to a month, yeah. Uh, sir, uh, in that case, uh, in February and March, can we, in uh, January and February, can we produce uh, beyond 100% or whatever is the mandated limit by the government to compensate for the March production? Actually, we, we run our plants uh, uh, at the full capacities. We don't reduce the uh, output from the plant. Okay, so this uh, 12 lakh 70,000, uh, which is the production limit, uh, if I'm not wrong, then is that achievable in the 11 months uh, uh, was yes. broadly what I wanted to ask. Yes. Once we achieve that, we will take the shutdown only thereafter, and we hope to achieve that in the first week of March. Okay. And so what would be the closing inventory for urea for us uh, during the Q uh, at the end of Q3? Uh, uh, around 24,000 tons. Around 24,000 tons. And so what would be the pool gas price for Q3 and uh, current uh, gas prices? So the okay, uh, it is dollar twenty three point two two per MMBTU for quarter three and C V this is twenty three point two two. Yeah. And current prices? December uh, final price was dollar twenty point five mm per MMBTU on N C V basis. So January is only provisional price. Sure. 
and sir uh, how are the current ammonia realizations the realization is continuing to be uh, uh, reasonably good um in the range of 15 to 20% of the you know margins are in the range of 15 to 20% but uh, currently the Sir, prices sorry, would talk to you may yeah. i request to come back for a follow up question sure thank you so much i request to all the participants please restrict to two questions per participant the next question is from the line of resham jain from dsp investment managers please go ahead yeah hi uh, good afternoon sir uh, so just on uh, the uh, capital allocation part which i keep asking every time and uh, i think uh, uh, you have uh, announced one capex on tan but beyond that uh, how are you planning to allocate such a large cash pool because uh, uh, it will take another 2 3 years time to whatever large projects you will commission uh, uh, so it seems a uh, lot of delay uh, or um, I, i don't know what is happening on that side if you can just explain this uh, because this has been a general uh, investor concern on how are you are planning to deploy a substantial cash flows uh, which is which you are going to generate yeah thank you resham so yeah we are going ahead with the ammonium nitrate project and we continue to explore further opportunities um as and when we come up with something we will definitely let the investor community know we just want to be mindful that what we do is aligned with the company's goals and focus um and and uh, we continue to work in that direction okay uh okay fine thank you thank you the next question is from lena falguni datta from jetaid securities please go ahead yeah good afternoon sir sir is it possible to say uh, like uh, the profits in npk trading would they be flat on an absolute basis why why in q3 uh we don't uh, comment on that as such and um, yeah the volumes and the situations were quite different last year compared to this year. just wanted to know that given that we have done quite good volumes so uh, uh, would it be fair to assume that they were flat uh, if not fallen so the if margins possible. were under higher pressure this year okay. because of the procurement prices going so high and the fact that as an industry along with the duf we want to provide uh, fertilizer to the farmers at a reasonable price so the margins uh, are under greater pressure compared to last year and sir one question i just uh, missed uh, your comment so if we have to supply for the uh, dap and npk for rabi season uh, when do we import when do we need to import which month so we start to contract from august onwards for rabi uh, season and then that continues till october or so August September October would be the main months for contracting for the rabi season. Okay. And you know, I mean product yeah. product goes into the soil large, largely around the middle till the middle of December or at best the third week of December. So idea is to get bulk of the product by then so it gets sold and it gets used by the farmers. Okay and sir one final question what would be the how would be the inventory fertilizer inventory uh, situation uh, uh, in the country uh, as of now Well uh, now as companies we are not privy to the overall inventory data uh, earlier the data was available but i think the department has now um, stopped access of that but our understanding and discussion with the department is that the inventory situation is uh, quite reasonable okay meaning it's not to uh, it's uh, managed it's not neither high nor low yeah it's it's quite reasonable that's what our understanding is okay um, okay thank you sir that's all so much thank you thank you 
The next question is from the line of Shreya Shah from ICICI Prudential Asset Management. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so my question is regarding yeah, energy. Sorry to interrupt you, but your voice is not coming very clear. May I request you to speak through the handset? I'm using the handset. Is it audible now? Uh, no, ma'am. Your voice is coming very feeble. Hello. Uh, hello. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, so my question is regarding energy efficiency. As you mentioned, uh, that uh, you will be uh, investing in uh, making your plants more energy efficient. So, if you see, as of now, the plants have already, uh, as compared to the other companies, it's quite energy efficient. So, how much further can we expect it to be efficient? Uh, I, from what I could understand, I think you're asking about energy efficiency, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, look, um, you know, it, it's one is absolute energy efficiency, and also the other is that if you're investing, are you getting a payback? So as of now, we consider any project which gives us a payback of around four years, uh, then we would implement that energy efficiency project, right? Uh, then this is also a function of the gas price and so on and so forth. So. While there is a number that a plant can reach, but it also depends on the kind of payback. So we look at all of that and then decide to invest. What I can say to you is that overall, Chambal, if you take the overall industry average, Chambal is uh, significantly better in energy efficiency than the overall industry average. Yes, so uh, that is what my question. So, how much further can we expect to go because we are already you know, better off than the others? So, how much further can we expect? Well, it's difficult to uh, answer that, uh, Shreya, okay. because okay. It, it depends on a number of uh, circumstances. You know, there is, there is an absolute level, but it depends on a whole host of other uh, circumstances. Okay, got it, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Aman from Augmenta Research. Please go ahead. Uh, I sir, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, can you please highlight how the prices and the market of ammonia is behaving globally? As of now, we are seeing a downward trend for the last uh, one and a half, two months. Uh, you know, uh, as we as you might understand that ammonia is also linked to gas and gas has high usage in the winters in Europe for heating and so on and so forth. Um, also obviously ammonia goes as a raw material in a number of uh, chemicals, a large part in fertilizers and so on. So right now we're seeing a downward trend. Again, whether that will continue, how low that will reach will probably emerge in the next few weeks. Um, as, as um, you know, the whole new sort of year evolves and will also depend on what happens uh, in terms of the geopolitical situation across the world. Oh, okay, so that's all from my side. Thank you. A request to all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant. The next question is from the line of Himanshu Bihani from Prabhudasli Ladar. Please go ahead. Um, Sir, hi, and thank you for taking my question. So, sir, I have two questions. Number one, it is on the NBS rates. So what we understand is that the the way the RM prices are falling, so it is very likely that the government would be revising downwards their NBS rates for FI24. So the question now is, if at all this happens on a retrospective from 1st January onwards, so how does one should actually look into the margin profile. So maybe we can expect some sort of like uh, one-offs in the 1Q24 numbers or some sort of that. So can you please help us with this? Yeah, you're right that uh, as the prices are falling, they will, you know, the government had announced uh, the NBS rates and normally in any case they announced fresh rates on the 1st of April. What we understand is that they will start to do this calculation from the middle of March. They look at the prices for the last six months and then basis that they do the calculation and declare a rate for the next six months. 
As regards um, whether that will have an impact, etc., again, it will depend on, we are still in sort of early February, it will also depend on what kind of prices um, happen in February and March. We have seen a decline in prices, especially let's say in January, but uh, the decline was less till then. So it again depends on how the prices move in February and March. Um, and there is also discussion happening with the government on how to treat the existing stock which the industry has and whether the existing rates should apply on that or not. So there's a lot of discussion that the fertilizer industry has, is, uh, uh, has, is having with the department to um, streamline the subsidy process. So the um, so just to add on that basically with if I actually work out with the spot pricing in terms of the RM as well as on the subsidy and the MRPs so the industry is actually making a very decent sort of margins in the current juncture so the question was largely that will the government allow the industry to make <coughs> of like profits yeah but uh, understand that this is uh, this may be a situation at a point in time but when you the government looks at one full year's data so when they look at the reasonability uh, they look at the full annual data and they calculate the return on cost of goods sold on an annualized basis and so the second question was largely on the bookkeeping side so just wanted to have an understanding on uh, the excess ammonia which we have been generating from the urea process so how do we account that on our books basically so it's a it's not very complicated we sell that and uh, that's revenue the there is a formula that the government has or a policy that the government has. What we have as excess ammonia is called technical excess ammonia, which means it is generated because of the inherent design of the plant. And when that happens, the government takes a certain percentage, 35% of the profit the government takes, the so 65% we the company keeps. So it's quite straightforward in that sense. And that is accounted into the urea revenues only. Yes. Good, sir. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. The next question is from the line of Ranjit from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for this opportunity. Uh, so I had just one question. So during the quarter, uh, there was this change in uh, policy from the government of India, rather encouraging the companies to get into a more long-term uh, price contract for their gas sourcing. So just wanted your thoughts of uh, how should one view this, uh, does this uh, material enough or would it change the way uh, of, uh, we have been accounting our gas sourcing? Yeah. So, you know, currently we have for a large proportion of our gas, we have a long-term contract which expire in 2028. And uh, a, a much very uh, relatively small percentage is on a spot basis. Uh, here again, I think uh, between the industry and the government, we, there's been close uh, working to you know, minimize the cost of spot gas. The government has also formed a small committee to look into the medium and long-term uh, contracts for bridging the gap which exists currently between long-term contracts of the company and what is required currently in the short term, right? So. Uh, and, and yes, I think overall the government wants gas to be purchased at the lowest possible cost. It is situation dependent whether it should be, um, you know, what proportion should be long term, what proportion should be short term. But in general, we want to be a significant proportion in long term contracts. We also have mid -term contracts. And we also have some mid term contracts if you find an advantageous situation. We've also taken the opportunity to enter into one-year and two-year contracts. But other angle that also kind of an highlighted was the ability was earlier with the government to bear the higher cost, which would now get transferred to the companies. So how should one do that? 
sorry your uh, voice was a little unclear can you repeat the sorry question, uh, so this uh, long term contract uh, would be a take or pay and to that extent it also brings a bit of liability uh, which was earlier borne by the government which is now getting transferred to the companies he said it is take or pay liability yeah yeah take or the long term contracts have take or pay but uh, that's not really a issue if that is your question okay sir sure thank you yeah thank you i request all the participants please restrict to two questions per participant the next question is from the line of tarang agarwal from molbridge capital please go ahead hi uh, two questions uh, and thank you for the opportunity again um the first one is is on the trading business so uh, we run any nrv risk uh, should the government decide to uh, uh, you know push down the subsidy prices yeah if uh, the subsidy is revised downwards whatever closing stock we do have we have that nrv risk Yeah. Okay. At the same time, like I mentioned, the, you know, the we are in discussion. The Fertilizer Association is in discussion with the government to apply the existing subsidy on the stock that is available with each company, which you carry in your books at the end of the okay. quarter. Okay. And how much would that be by volume, approximately? It is difficult to state at this point in time because you know. the the sale is still going on you know so if it moves out and the farmer picks it up then it is no longer in stock so it's a little difficult state what would be the number any ballpark estimate no but it's 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 quite difficult because you see it, it depends not only on us you know it depends I, on the stock and I, movement other companies have and so on yeah okay no worry so okay uh, the second question is on crop protection i mean just to get a sense uh, uh, on the business a bit better uh, how i mean how is our portfolio of of things here i mean are we pervasive across all pesticides i mean fungicides herbicides insecticides are we uh, pervasive across cotton corn rice uh, just some flavor on this would be helpful are there any sure. specific uh, uh, registrations that we have which are probably um, not yet in the market uh, in terms of uh, the other peers and that's why we're getting traction on them you know that's a really excellent question i'll ask ashish our vice president sales and marketing to answer that <laughs> yeah the Uh, tarang you know uh, uh, as you uh, rightly asked for whatever crops uh, uh, are there in our uh, in uh, operating geographies each and every insect uh, pest fungus and we discovered in our portfolio in fact we have some in some cases we have multiple solutions uh, offering to the trade uh, for some of the insecticides and fungicides so it's broadly uh, uh, the portfolio is broadly covering the entire uh, crop cycle of insect pests and fungus okay and i mean attraction in the december quarter has also been quite nice so i mean would it therefore be safe to presume that you have offerings for kharif as well as rabi yes i mean uh, i think what like ashish mentioned we have a very comprehensive mapping of crop versus uh, fungicide pesticide and uh, weedy side right um very very intimately mapped across both kharif and rabi so it's crop wise mapped actually so therefore it doesn't matter whether it's kharif or rabi it's crop mapped it's a very comprehensive portfolio that we have thank you i request all the participants please restrict to two questions per participant the next question is from the line of prashant bihani from el capital please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity again uh, sir uh, during the uh, implementation of one nation one fertilizer uh, the fertilizer uh, secretary had told on television that uh, eventually they would want to restrict the <clears throat> the movement of fertilizers implying that you know if uh, we have a plant in rajasthan then rather than uh, selling fertilizers 
to as far as UP, we should we should rather first exhaust the demand in Rajasthan or the nearby states. So, have we seen any change in supply plan from the government for the entire industry? Rest, uh, uh, whereby you know uh, the supply to the uh, to our uh, hinterland markets are increasing and uh, to the uh, far off markets are reducing. Have we seen any short, sort of indication or change in supply plan? Look, I think first of all, it's a very positive thing that the government is doing because it reduces the overall logistics costs for the country, right? Which was not benefiting anybody. So they are they have developed an optimized uh, model for movement of fertilizers, which they are in the process of implementing. Um, as regards movement, obviously the cons our consumption of one state is uh, not is way less than our production. So we will continue to get uh, supply plans, and we continue to get supply plans for multiple states, right? And uh, also, you know, uh, I'm sure that there is also a realization that if you make it too restrictive, then in case there are shutdowns and so on and so forth, then there will be a challenge on availability. So an optimized approach is being taken. That's one. And you know, as Chambal. While, of course, urea is a critical key product, but over the years, we have built a very, very strong uh, brand, which is not just restricted to urea or other non-urea bulk fertilizers, but also our crop protection and specialty nutrients, the Uttam brand. And, and therefore, you know, we, we are pretty comfortable with whatever optimized movement plans that the government gives. So, sir, uh, there have been uh, changes in the supply plan to that effect, or at least the start has been made to that effect? As of now, it is uh, almost negligible. Uh, sir, if that happens, you know, then, uh, uh, I mean, our uh, other products, uh, apart from X of urea, they have been mostly, you know, tagged along uh, with urea. So if uh, our sale is concentrated in the hinterland geographies only, then uh, would it have some sort of a question mark on growth of other business segments? So Prashant, first of all, we do not tag any products with you at all. So let me be very explicitly clear on that, right? Uh, that's one. Second, as I said in, in the first part of my answer, we have built a very, very strong Uttam brand, which is not restricted to urea at all. So if you see, we have expanded into five states down south, or uh, south and east, Maharashtra, West Bengal, Gujarat, um, Andhra Pradesh, and Telangana. And we are uh, selling non-urea bulk fertilizers. We are selling um, crop protection chemicals, specialty nutrients to those states. We don't have any urea there. So our recognition by the farmer of Chambal as a company of our brand Uttam, our um, practices in the market in terms of the support that we provide, all of those also stand for themselves. So it's not we are not at all bothered about any changes in movement plans. Sure. And lastly, sir, uh, on the crop protection side, uh, many companies have told that uh, there is surplus channel inventory uh, because of the adverse monsoon and delayed season. Uh, sir, uh, uh, how has been our receivables uh, faring uh, in that context and uh, do you see uh, that it would be prudent to slow the rate of growth in CP in the light of uh, the industry already having higher channel inventory? So first of all, our receivables are absolutely very, very good, very strong, no issues. We do a large proportion of our business in CPC on cash terms, right, one. Second, we don't take any returns back from the market. Uh, and third, we absolutely have no intention of slowing down. We believe we provide a lot of value through the products and the service and you know, programs like seed to harvest to the farmer, and we have intentions to keep speeding along as we are. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Deepak Chitroda. 
Pramiti ji, please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, sir, just have uh, one question uh, on the, you know, the uh, nitro uh, national hydrogen uh, mission policy, which has been announced by the government. So what's your thought uh, in terms of, uh, you know, how it is going to have impact on the port industry, especially in case of urea, because as I understand, I think some target has been set by the government, you know, about 5% to 20% from next year onwards. So how basically, you know, it is being, you know, translate into the costing part of it. Will it uh, basically improve the margin for the, for the industry going forward? And uh, I mean, basically, what's your thought process uh, when you, uh, uh, you know, when you talk to interact uh, with the government, uh, you know, and various other organizations? Thank you. Okay. So first of all, to be very, very clear, there is no target set for any part of the fertilizer industry on use of green hydrogen, <laughs> green ammonia. That's one. Second is for production of urea, you not only need hydrogen, which is then converted to ammonia, but you also need carbon dioxide. So I think uh, the, not only the Department of Fertilizer, but uh, this has also been explained to the Ministry of uh, Energy and the Renewable Energy Department that to produce urea, you need both carbon dioxide and ammonia, which comes from hydrogen. Therefore, just producing green hydrogen is not going to suffice to produce urea. Okay, now as regards the broader question on green hydrogen policy, we are looking at it. That's not necessarily our core area. We, we are examining it as of now out of, uh, you know, if we see any opportunities in it going forward, but it's very, very early uh, days on that. Mm, okay, so basically it's very early, early days I mean, uh, to talk about it. Uh, and ministry is also basically not clear in terms of the in terms of the, you know, what is the future uh, towards the, the urea industry, particularly if you talk about in the costing terms? No, no, the future is very clear for the urea industry. The urea industry needs carbon dioxide also to make urea. Therefore, the use of green hydrogen and green ammonia in the urea industry is not foreseen in the future that I can think of. Okay, okay. Sure, sir. Sure, thanks. Thank you. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So thank you very much, all of you, for your very insightful uh, questions. Um, it is good to have the questions and provide clarity to our investors. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you very much. On behalf of Shambhal Fertilizers and Chemicals Limited that concludes this conference, Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.